Good morning. Um, so in in the, the the next I guess video of, of the series that I'm doing with with the plant suite and advanced steel from our, our Tech Day roadshows, um, what you see on the screen here is a model from my counterpart Sam McAllister over in Sydney. So he's uh, done this warehouse for me, and what we're going to show is me exporting this model from Revit into advanced steel, making some changes in the model and synchronizing those changes back. Um, I'm not, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not necessarily going to do the whole model, but I'm going to show the model coming in. We're going to modify some members, remove some members, and even add some members just to show the three uh, workflows that you can do with that. So while you're inside Revit, um, to get the advanced steel extension, have a look at the top right of the Revit screen, and this is also in AutoCAD and in Inventor and any Autodesk products. Uh, there's a little X at the top there that'll take you to the Exchange Store, and then you just need to look for the Advanced Steel extension inside that that store, download it and install it, obviously, and then you'll end up with this button here. So we're going to export that out as an Advanced format. There are a couple other formats there, but we're just going to do the Advanced one. Stick it on my desktop. Um, so what's that done? Uh, that's written an XML file with all the data inside it. And then what we're going to do is jump into Advanced Steel, go to the Export and Import tab here, and we've got a few options here. So we do have one dedicated to Revit, so it'll export uh, export or import that XML file, but we can also do it from uh, the Advanced Export Import as well. So just clicking on the, the Revit Import button, we look for the XML file, and then you can see there that uh, Advanced Steel will, will bring all the members in. Model them, we have the full intelligence there, they're all placed in the right spot. Uh, and even if I double click on one, you can see that the, the properties come through. Uh, just for my own sake, I'm, I'm going to delete uh, all the beam shortenings, just to make the model look a little bit neater for me. Uh, and I'll switch it to realistic so we can see it a bit better. So, uh, from Sam's model, he's placed some purlins in there. So, uh, for whatever reason, once my model comes into advanced steel, maybe I've just decided I don't like them in there. Uh, maybe they're the wrong type or the wrong style. So for this end bay, I'm just going to turn around and say get rid of them, and I'm going to get rid of this last one here. Okay, so what we've done, we've deleted members. Okay, and I'll delete the top one there. So that's just the CHS that Sam's placed there. So we've deleted. So I can modify members as well. So I'm just going to do a match properties command. I want to match um, the two the members there in this end bay, I want to change it from a CHS to match the UB going there for the for the, the top roof there, and I'm also going to place a new member in here. So just go to the Home tab, go to the I section command, and then run an I section from the IP of the second bay down to the IP of the first one. So you can see there, I haven't bothered with uh, the positioning or anything like that. I'm going to do the same thing with that I did before is match the properties so we, we get the same thing there okay so again just for time I've only done that first bay there we've removed members we've changed members and we've added so I'm just going to give this a quick numbering and then I'm going to export this model back out oh, and I'll, I will actually save it first so I'll save it to my desktop Revit to advanced steel workshop so I've saved it, and then I'm going to export that file back out again. Okay, so what that's done, that's placed an XML file on my desktop of my advanced steel model with the changes. So now I come back into Revit, and I don't want to import that model, I want to synchronize it. The import will basically override everything that I've already got in here. So I want to synchronize and look at the differences between the two. So I'm just going to load up that XML file. Okay, and you can see there that if I click on the button change, I'm sorting out by members that were deleted, so I do want to pick all of them. I've got member that was appended, so that's the new one. And I'm going to scroll down the bottom here and find the members that were modified the type. Okay, so those two were those two, the two edge CHSs that are now going to be UBs. So I've selected the ones that I want to change and I'm going to click on apply all actions so for now Revit's come up and asked me for a mapping so mapping the advanced steel member to the uh, Revit member 
So I'll just go OK. And you'll see in the background there that the Revit model has changed. So we haven't bothered with, with any of the other uh, members, but you can see here that we've got that new top member there, and then we've got the two edge ones, and we have deleted those purl ones there. Okay, so if I was to keep going with this model inside Advanced Steel, I could go through, do all the proper purl ones, do all the proper connections, uh, add some stairs and handrails, and then synchronize those changes back.